brothers. Uh, my name is Steve Muhammad. I'm a, a Muslim brother, so I like to greet all of you in the greeting words of peace. Some of you may have known it. It's in the Arabic language. It's Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. And in English, that simply means peace be unto you. I have a nonprofit organization called Knowledge for Life. Uh, Knowledge for Life is a multimedia company that basically documents events that take place in our community. One of the things that a brother always told me, he says, in the art of war, the person who has air superiority is usually the person that's going to win the war. Well, as Brother Shaq was saying, one of the things that we want to focus on in, at Knowledge for Life is air superiority, mean, meaning the airwaves. A lot of our young people, as Brother Shaq was saying once again, are being killed before they die. <laughs> the question is, how are you being killed before you die? When you look at the tele-a-vision, right, it's called tele-a-vision. On the television, it has what? Programs. So a lot of the programs on tele-a-vision are programming our young black men to think that we're pimps. That's right. To think that we're gangsters. That's right. To think that we're hustlers. That's right. To think that we're everything except the children of God. So what we want to do with Knowledge for Life is just putting out a whole new message, a whole new programming that will have our young people embracing who they are. And when we embrace who we are and we be who and we be who we are as young black men, then we got power. We got real power. Brother Picard mm -hmm. Lumumba, who is going to speak on the assassination of the black male image. Brother Picard is a very strong brother, so I want you all to, even if you got a pencil and paper, Get a pencil and paper out, write notes down, because what my brother's going to share with you is going to be very powerful. So please give him your undivided attention and give him a warm round of applause. And as we do it in the in our community, if a brother says something that touches your spirit, say something. You say that's right. You know what I'm saying? Give him your energy. Feed him your energy. So let us give our brother a warm round of applause. As my brother said, I'm a cultural brother. My name is Nkoi Namumba. Um, so I will probably greet you in a Swahili term that simply means, that simply Hawaii Ghani. That means what's the news. And today the news is the assassination of the black male language. For many of us, we may be unaware of this term. We may even think that this is something new. But I want to let you know that 15 years ago, the a doctor named Ella Floyd Hutchinson wrote a book called The Assassination of the Black Male Image. And most of this uh, workshop that we're going to do today is based on his teachings in the book. We can go to the next slide. So we need to first ask us, what is an assassination? So I want someone to, you right here, what's your name? Uh, Lavelle. 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 Okay. What do you think assassination uh, uh, assassination is? Uh, where you kill somebody without them without them knowing where it's coming. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Good answer. You. Okay. Anyone else? Someone who has intentions to harm somebody about the person knowing. Okay. Okay. What is an assassination? To murder by sudden or secret attack? <laughs> it's just what he said, didn't he? That's what assassination is. Can we hit the next slide? So we want to look at who was against African American men. When did the assassination start? Does anyone think they know when the assassination of the African American male started? Right here. Very, very good. Close. Not all the way back. I mean, this is a historical question. My brother right here. When, when African Americans started breaking the way from each other. Okay, okay. Uh, a little further back. Can I give one more? One more. Okay. Well, the assassination of Black Mill Limit started actually over 500 years ago <laughs> when Europeans decided they wanted to colonize Africa and enslave us. See, what you have to understand is. In order to get a whole country or continent to believe it's okay to enslave some people, treat them like animals, and bring them over halfway across the world, and beat them and kill them and rape their women, they have to first destroy their character, destroy the image that people have of them. This is why oftentimes today, when black men are arrested, thrown in jail, shot or killed dead like Trayvon Martin or my cousin Kyle in English, no one is in the uproar because society states that due to the assassinates on image, that it's okay. Mm -hmm. But they're actually doing the world a favor by getting rid of us. So we want to know who was against African American males? Someone I haven't heard of one. Who, who, who was against African American males? Someone I haven't heard of one. You right here. Um, I think people that are against African American males are 
Yeah. All coaches. Okay. Okay. Um, he wasn't necessarily against African American. He was against all African American people. Uh, Willie Lynch. Okay. Okay. That's a historical figure. Okay. Can I get one more? You right there with the braids. I'm gonna call on you. What's your name? James Milton. James Milton. Okay. Well, not for me, but I see one. Okay, okay. Well, the powers that be, because you know, some of press is all white and black. So you can talk about not another day, but hit the next slide. All right. Why are they against African American males? But well, Dr. Francis Chris Rosen states that Europeans know that they are what? A genetic minority. They only make up about 17% of the world's population. Now, due to sheer numbers, they're going to be taken out at some point. Dr. Jawanza Kaju from his book, Count the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys, states that the problem is that we are a threat to their power. But we have to realize that women are powerless everywhere in the world. It's not that I'm sexist, but it's the truth. The threat to white male supremacy will come from black men. And because of that, like he said, they want to kill us before we grow. But well, we're going to show you how we prevent that. So what's the end result of the assassination of the African American image? Justified by homicide. Mm -hmm. That's the end result. Mm -hmm. Huh? I, I'm sure. In the class, we've talked about the mass lynchings in the 18 and 1900s in America. We have we went over that. Yes, about, and what was always the excuse they gave for killing us? They, we committed a crime. That's what they said. It was raping a white woman, stealing something. But they always said we committed a crime. What was the crime Trayvon Martin committed? What, uh, what, what, Stills and, and, and a hoodie on. What was the crime Simon Nicholas committed? What was the crime that the brother up on Hoover committed? It's always they say we committed a crime and that's why we had to kill him, just a crime of homicide. But we're gonna look at that. Brother talked about Malcolm X, El Hajim League, El Shabazz. He states the media is the most powerful entity on earth. They had the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. So what we're gonna do next slide, is we're gonna look at a about a nine minute video. This is a brother. Are they block Ooh, okay. Okay, we're not gonna look at it. But what the brother is actually talking about on the video is how they control the image that people get for, uh, of us. One of the things he talks about is that during the fifties and sixties and seventies during the Black Power movement. Anyone familiar with the Black Power movement in the sixties and seventies? Anyone? You heard of it before? Okay. Well the three years of black power were self determination, self defense, and self respect. They saw that we first off we were suspected, respecting ourselves, we were treating our women right, we were uniting as a people, you know, we were believe in defending ourselves, we wasn't allowing ourselves to be killed, you know, with impunity. And secondly, thirdly, we believed in self-determination and what they call Kuchi Shakalia. We were defining ourselves, naming ourselves, speaking for ourselves, creating for ourselves, and not allowing other people to do this. So what they very really skillfully did, the powers that be, white, black, Asian, whatever it is, they said we had to take out their leaders. Young man like you, young man like me when I was coming up, we said, we, I wanted to be like Malcolm. I wanted to be like Martin. I wanted to be like A. Philip Randolph. They said, no, we can't have that. So they killed them all. And guess what they came in with next? Black exploitation movies. Have you ever seen the black exploitation movies? The Pimp, Shaft, the Mac? Yeah. yeah. Then next thing you know, you get what? Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood, yes. Menace of Society. A lot of people think that. Mr. Society is something new, but the brother says in this book that a white man back in the 1800s wrote, wrote a, a paper called Men's Society. And guess who it was talking about? Black yeah, people. It was talking about us. So it isn't nothing new. It isn't anything new at all. We get the next slide. Okay, so we talked about how does it work. What Brian we had here was actually this clip. Report for dismissal. Of the trailer Brian the movie Men's Society. Mm. And it just showed us violent, gang ridden shooting all around chip women, children, and babies. You know, that's what they project today on us. Turn the news on last night, what's the first thing they show? Black on black crime, sensationalism. You know, like we don't know how to act. They don't want to come in here and do an episode on this class of a crunk for life or what a Steve doing with, with knowledge for life. You see what I'm talking about? This is how the assassination of our image comes about. Then of course, this is the video, y'all know that song by Trey Song, Invented Sex. Yeah. See, they reduce us to the size of our phallus. We're no good for anything but making babies. Then they say we don't want to take care of them. Mm. You see? So we're just, you're not a man based on your intellect or your character. We'll get to that later in the workshop. It's all based on how many babies you can make and how good you and me. But the sad part is the sisters are believe. They're not going for the intelligent brothers. They're not going for the articulate brothers. They're not going for the brothers with the A's and B's in class. They're going for the brothers with the D's and S. They're on his way out. We're trying to pimp, push drugs. 
or be the first basketball player in this time, or the first drug that never get caught. You know, so we even need to realize that this even the time to have an effect on our system and how they view us. Now we're gonna talk about some negative coping skills. Then we're gonna talk about the positive. Can anyone tell me what Uncle Tom or sellout is? My brother right here. Uh, you said uh, Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom. Yes. A sellout is like somebody who. That's close, that's close. Brother right here. And somebody who like ruin everything, like think like that like mess everything up and then like just like an example, like somebody smoking and everybody but that ain't right. Is it somebody like that? No, no, no. That's actually somebody good. If you smoke and they tell you that's no, I'm not saying, right. If somebody like man, you you a party people or something like that. Okay, okay. I, in the back, in the back. <clears throat> I think it's like somebody that like they try to do something to be cool. It's like like what you said, like trying to smoke somebody like mm -hmm. that. Like just trying to fit in. Okay, okay. Well, we define Uncle Tom as someone who literally tries to become white. <laughs> literally. They want to talk like them, act like them, dress like them. They want to identify with their person more than themselves. Because they have a belief that if they act like white people, live around white people, they fight women. So we can be we can, we can be real in here, can't be shot. Yeah. We can be real in here. Then all of a sudden, nobody will view them as a black male anymore. And then they will be oblivious from their oppression. But we know that's not true. What's the second? The second negative coping skill we're talking about is racism. Does anyone tell me what being racist is? Right here. I want to be of your own race. Very good, very good. This is what we're talking about. Many, many people we see, the negative coping skills is, they say, I'm just a human being, I'm not black. Or they say, I'm multicultural. And you know what I tell them every day? What culture do you practice every day? What culture do you promote every day? Mm. What cultural holidays do you celebrate? Do you celebrate our holidays or their holidays? Then they can see, I'm not really multicultural at all. You know, I'm, I'm really, really becoming a seller. But let's look at some positive coping skills. But one of the positive coping skills is learning who you are by learning your culture. The ability to successfully endure oppressive and hostile environments increases when one sense of self reflects one's cultural, her cultural heritage. Studies show that students who adopt a distinct value system are best prepared to resist oppression. Can anyone tell me what they think that means? Give you an example. Y'all have a rules, right? When you come into class, follow directions the first time, Keep hands and feet and rude comments to yourself. This is the value system that if you practice value system will help you be successful in class, correct? Yes. Well, we're talking about a value system that's going to make you successful in life. And we're going to get to that. Next slide, please. Okay. This value system is known as the Nagusu Saba, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Does anyone know what Kwanzaa is? It's a black value system. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And so the first course states of unity or emotion to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, or race. Kucha Shakalia, self-determination, to define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. Ujima, collective working responsibility, to build and maintain our own communities, our own stores and shops, to make our brothers and sisters problems, our problems, and solve them together. Guapalek is economic, to build and maintain our own stores, shops, and other businesses, and pop them together. Nia, purpose, to make our collective vocation, the building and development of our community, or to restore our people to our traditional greatness. Since we said traditional greatness, that means we're going all the way back to Africa. You now, oftentimes, when we talk about history, we start in 1619. Now, the law of states, we got Mark in here. Now, the law of states, where you start decides where you end up. You start 1619, where do you start? You start on a plantation, right? I don't draw a bit well, but you start on a plantation, right? Guess what that's going to end you up? In the ghetto. Or well, you can start four million years ago on a pyramid, and you can end up free. So I'm going to ask y'all today, where do you want to start? The pyramid. You want to start on a pyramid or a plantation? Pyramid. Pyramid or a plantation? Pyramid. Pyramid or a plantation? Pyramid. That's right. We want to start on a pyramid. When we were ruling the world, when we were kings and queens, you know, we built the first colleges. We had the first learning centers, University of uh, uh, Timbuktu. In Timbuktu. Yeah, did you know? Nowadays, when people graduate from high school, graduate from college, what do they do? They go out, take their cap, and throw it up in the air. Guess where they got that from? Mm -hmm. They got it from us. In Timbuktu, Mali. Yeah, they got it from us. They don't want to tell you that. They don't want to tell you that. 
Cool. It's very important. Teacher. Talking about cool or creativity, to always do as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. That means we don't litter. That means we don't call each other bad names. That goes back to not making any good comments. Everything we do, we want to build each other up. We want to make each other strong. There's strength and unity. Of course, last but not least, in mind and faith, to believe with all our hearts in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, and the righteousness and victory of our struggle. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King had faith in us. Malcolm X had faith in us. W.E.B. Du Bois had faith in us. Teacher John the Truth had faith in us. Ray LaCroix Bethune had faith in us. And I have faith in you. Do you have faith in yourself is a question. Yes. yes. All right. Next slide, please. Okay, don't assassinate your own image. This is very important. Oftentimes, this is what we do. We assassinate our own image. We assassinate our own image. First, we say, first step not to assassinate your own image is by being aware of what you say and do. So just say, what are some of the things that we do that could possibly assassinate our own image? Right here, I haven't heard it from you. Hitting somebody in the face. Hitting somebody in the face. So we can say violence. Okay, violence. Great. What's another way? Somebody haven't heard from you right there. Cursing. Cursing, okay. Profanity. Right. Okay. Right here. To be a poor example to your like brothers and sisters. Okay. Negative role model, okay. Negative role model. Right. Great. And another one. Uh, don't like no like drugs, drugs. Okay, drugs. Doing or using drugs. Okay. Doing or using drugs. Good, good, good. Right there in the back. And you said sellout. Being a sellout. I like that. I like that because that's what we, oftentimes we got a lot. We talked about the media. Oftentimes what we see on television are sellouts, and that's the image they give us of people that are successful. Yeah. You know, people that lead the community. It's something that Walter Rock in his book I want y'all to read it one day. It's called How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Not only did Europe underdevelop Africa economically, but also underdeveloped Africa intellectually. Mm -hmm. It's what they call the brain, the brain drain. They even do that here. If you ever notice, you see somebody in your community they're doing well, they're smart to go to college, get their degree, then they move out the hood, mm -hmm. go, go, go somewhere else, and now develop someone else's community. We need to stay in our community and make our community better. It's called a brain drain. That's very good. Talk about Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom. I don't like Uncle Tom. I don't like him at all. There's a book called Uncle Tom's Camera. You have to get that one too. The second step is to be walking, talking, thinking, and most importantly, acting anti-stereotype. How can you be an anti-stereotype? Uh, dress right. Dressing right. Dressing appropriately. Uh. That's right. Have your hands up on you. You know, talk like you got some sense. Not yeah. know what you know, cat daddy. We know how to speak English. You know, when I was 18, I graduated high school, went to the military. Before you go off the boot camp, they go send you to a place called Mets, where they do your orientation, give you all your shots, get your height and weight. Teach. Me and my friend, you know, some white lady come up to us. Say, how you doing, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, no ma'am. She says, oh my God, you speak so well. So how do you expect us to talk? We're not monkeys. We're not retarded. You see, due to the assassination of our image, she thought we were supposed to be acting like we was hooked on products. So we want to be a walking, talking, anti-stereotype. Anti-stereotype. Third step is to get involved in your community. So a positive example of excellence and achievement. You know, Fahotep, we're going all the way back to the pyramid now that we talked about Fahotep. He was the teacher to the Pharaoh's sons. He trained them to become king. He said that in all things strive for excellence so that there's no fault found in your character. Well, the Shaq he talked about, he said, how many of y'all have given 125, 150% of your grades? Strive for excellence in all that you do. Right. That no fault can be found in your character. Right. Strive for excellence. Strive for excellence. How did, how did Kobe, he, they came back last night. Came back. Huh? They were, he strove for excellence. Huh? He didn't say, I'm going to give 20% this quarter, 50% this quarter. He gave 100% or four quarters in overtime. And we need to do the same thing. Strive for excellence in all that we do. Okay, ah oh, man, it messed up. But don't destroy your own image. But you see, you can't really see. But we have a picture of a mad boot holding a white woman. And then most of us favorite bouncer player the blind doing the same thing. He called it artistic expression. I said, really? Because what does it say up here? What does that say? Destroy the mad boot. 
You see what we're talking about? Oh, man. So we need to look at that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. The one Duncan doing our commercials. He's the story. He's assassinating his own image. He's assassinating your image as well. Because who was on television the most? Huh? Are we on TV the most? No. He's on television the most, and as a result, this is what people think of us. See, the media has the ability to poison relationships. So that a person from Norway, Norway, a person from Sweden, a person from Hong Kong has an uh, idea of us that has never even met us. You see? They don't want to have them do us, and they've never met us because of the tell lie vision. Hmm. Tell lie vision. You see, it ain't telling the truth, it's telling you a lie. That's right. Get the next slide. Counter the assassination of the back of my link. Just say no. Somebody tell you, hey, just skip school. No. Somebody say, just go to this young girl's house. You say no. no. Somebody say, just, just go to the spot. You say no. Somebody say, just skip school. You say no. Somebody say, just cheat on the test. You say no. Nancy Reagan said, just say no. I'm telling you, it's Bacardi Moon, but just say no. You know, the Reagans, they was going to bring the drugs in the community. We ain't going to get into that. That's for another day. You know, but just say no. Do for self. All people who have self-determination, all ability that have agency, they do for themselves. They don't look for other people to do for them, they do for themselves. When y'all do y'all schoolwork, do you do it or you get somebody else to do it? Right. And when you go to college, you're going to do your homework or you're going to get somebody else to do it? And when y'all start your own business, are you going to do it or you're going to get somebody else to do it? That's right. How many business How many business owners I got in here? How many business owners I got in here? Everybody's hands should go up. You should want to write the check instead of somebody writing it for you. That's right. They talked about one of the problems we have in our education system is that they teach us to be employees and not employers. I want y'all to create some jobs instead of begging somebody for one. The solution, learn who you are by learning your culture. How many of us know what culture is? Somebody I haven't heard from. Somebody, you right here, haven't heard from you. What do you think culture is? Culture is just, um, I really don't know. Okay, all right. I appreciate you being out. Right here, right up front. Um, culture is like, like, it doesn't matter what race you are, but like, what kind of, uh, what you believe in. Like, what you and your friends or your family believe in. Okay. Or the people that you're with. Okay, okay, let's get one more. I'm going to go over here. Your culture is like where you come from, where you Okay, great, great. Well, that's, those, those are all good answers. We define culture as a value system, a way of life. And there's seven areas of culture. History, religion, or what we call spirituality and ethics, social organization, economic organization, political organization, creative production, and ethos, or collective identity. Through the sake of time, we're going to look at collective identity. Next slide, please. Sun Tzu said in the art of war, he said, if you know your enemies and know yourself, you will not be in danger in a hundred battles. If you know your enemy, know your, if you do not know your enemies, know yourself, you'll be in danger in every single battle. So I'm gonna ask y'all some questions. What, what have we been called or what do we call ourselves in America? What do you mean? Well, what do we call ourselves? What, Afro-American, okay. Afro-American, right? Uh, some people, I ran into a sister, but a shack on time, she said she still identified herself as Negro. Right. Go put Negro down. That's what you're gonna say, Negro. But I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. Black. Black. Okay. Let's see, we can say uh, African American, and then we can say American. I think you know where I'm going with this. You know. So just ask ourselves, why do Japanese call themselves Japanese? Because that's that's their culture, right? They come from a land called Japan, right? Yeah. Why do German people call themselves German? Because they originated from Germany. They come from a land Teach called Germany, Germany right? The why do Mexican people say they, they're Mexican? Because they're from Mexico. So they come from a land called Mexico, okay. So have you ever seen a place on the world map called Negro Land? No. Alright. How about Black Land? No. How about Afro-American Land? No. Alright, you only got two left. African-American, right? Yeah. But let's be Those honest. Those are two different lands, like Africa is exactly. over there and America exactly. is over there. So let's be honest. What do people think of? And they call them African-Americans because uh, where we were really African, and then we came all the way over here, so we're really now African American. Right, right. And I'm, I'm, I'm even going to expand on that a little bit. But what, what do most people think of when they think of Africa? Uh, China, uh, yeah. what around with no clothes on, yeah. jungle, oh, savage, cannibals. But what do people think of America? Think of America. Red, white, blue, and apple pie. Yeah. It's all because of this term right here called 
his story. You didn't know all history is that somebody's story. You know what I'm talking about. Abraham Lincoln had freed the slaves. Christopher Columbus, he was discovered America, he was lost. He's lost. And the Indians found him when George Washington did tell a lie. He had 386 slaves working on his plantation the day he died. Did you know he sold one of my ancestors for a barrel of rum? I hope in this school, at least, I know they're not in this school, telling you George Washington never told a lie, never told a lie, never told a lie, and the truth goes much. You know, I know they're not saying that here. I know they're not saying that here, are they? They ain't teaching y'all that, wait, I'm in the right place here. I'm in the right place. But you know what I'm, I'm concerned with? I'm concerned with what's known as mystery. Or better yet, my story. And I want to ask y'all some questions. To clear some mystery. What happened to a people that were first to read and write using what was known as hieroglyphics? Y'all know what hieroglyphics is, right? Yes, yes. Great, great. We, we're in an advanced class today. We're in an advanced class. And I feel smarter. Okay, but now I can't read them right at all. What happened to those people? They huh? That's right. They were killed and slaved. Why did their language? Why did their history? Why did their religion? Why did they God? That's what happened to them. What happened to a people that built the pyramids but now live in the projects? They were robbed. They were robbed. Exactly. And you know how you make a slave? You know how you make a slave? That's right. You gotta you gotta strip them of everything they knew about themselves. That's how you make a slave. You strip them of their God. You strip them of their religion. You strip them of their culture, you strip them of their language, and then you give them yours. That's how you make a slave. So we want to focus on, as he said before, he said, I am intelligent African male. That's what I like to say. I tell people all the time, just because you brought me across a body of water didn't change who I was. You ever notice you meet Mexican people, Chinese people? They may have been here five generations. They don't say I'm Chinese American, they say I'm Chinese. Chinese. You know why? Because they have a connection to a land base. You have connected to a land base, you have connected to your culture. That means you know who you are. That means you have your own form of political organization, your own form of social organization, your own form of economic organization. I never, I never seen any Asians uh, occupying Wall Street. I never saw any Mexicans occupying Wall Street. I didn't see any of them protesting in Washington. But they had their own culture, their own set of way of doing things. And we need to get, get to that ourselves. Next slide. Okay. So one couple minutes. What are the characteristics of a man? We have to end anyway. What are the characteristics of a man? Um, like his height, his voice. Okay. Okay. His voice. Okay. His responsibility. Responsibility. That's very good. That's very good. You have to be responsible. We define responsibility as saying you're going to do something, being able to get it done. Like when you tell your kid you're coming to the school. That's right. And you show up. You're not somewhere at somebody's house trying to push some box. Lay it up onto some female. You told your son you're going to be there and you was there. Mm -hmm. That's responsibility. In the back. This bravery. Bravery, okay. We're going to call that audaciousness. You go down. Okay. These are the core characteristics of a man that I've been taught. First one is to be knowledgeable. To be the knowledgeable of self, society, and the world. Knowledgeable of your <coughs> possibility and also knowledgeable of your history. You have to first know who you are and who, and who you are not. Many of us don't even know that. Second is to be principled. They have a correct value system that we define as in the rules of science. We believe that principles are categories of commitment and priority that define human possibilities. Without principles, practice will be limited. Number three, we believe that you must have dedication, investment, and involvement. And one, self-development. Thus, you have to be committed to self-development. Two, family development. Three, Race development, for organizational development. We have to always be committed to developing ourselves, our family, our community, and our race. Number four is to be strong. That means to be durable, to have internalized capacity to withstand all crises, all problems. And of course, if we call it adaptive vitality, that means to be adjust, be able to adjust to changing circumstances without losing substance or essence. Number five is to be disciplined. That's, that's really to value yourself. You know, one of the reasons why many of our brothers go around shooting up people, go around selling rocks, because they don't value themselves. They don't care what happens to them. But someone that cares about their life, they're going to make sure that they look to make their lives better. They're not going to do anything that they believe is going to endanger themselves, get them shot, get them thrown in jail. They're going to value themselves. And when you value yourself, this is where discipline comes in. Say, so, now nah, I can't do that. My dad will kill me. You know, I can't do that. My mama killed me. I can't do that. I may get shot. That's valuing yourself. Achievement oriented. This is three steps. We're taught that a first 
step that you must have to be achievement-oriented is to have a dream of capacity. That is to think beyond the given, to envision a new world and always build it. A capacity to conceive, to look beyond the immediate, to see us as a people coming back on the world stage of human history as a free, proud, and productive people. We have to first be able to see that. You see, before I put this workshop together, I had to dream it up. I had to see the fact that I would be able to put this workshop together and come here today and speak in front of all you guys today. Number two is to be a builder. We believe a man takes nothing and makes something. Please excuse the interruption during the discussion of time, from nothing. but we have bus in Alabama. There was nothing there but a farm really late. Now that university still stands to this day. Parents the number three, and let us you know what you're going to do. That means you never I accept defeat. You appreciate it. Thank you're always posed and achieved alternative. No, you've never lost till you give up. Many of us are giving up. You know, I we ask a question, brother, brother Shaq. When a brother that's in, 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 in game war goes into the other game's turf mm -hmm. and gets shot up 12 to 1 odds, mm -hmm. was that murder or was it suicide? Mm -hmm. suicide? Suicide. You see what I'm talking about? He gave up. We never give up. Yeah, you never you never lose until you surrender. We never do that. And last is to be audacious. I think the brother said bold. And that is the bold. We're bold. We're daring to be great. We're doing, we're pushing possibilities to the limit, and we're doing what other people think is un, 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 unachievable. This is what Obama did. You can't be no black president. You can't be no black president. He said, I'm going to show you what. I'm going to do what other people think is impossible and achieve it. These are the core characteristics of a man. You have a question? Yeah, you also got to be like independent and have other people can that, that That's actually correct. And that goes to commit when we talk about family development and community development. It also ties into what that third principle of Kwanzaa we talked about, which is Ujima. Now I want someone to come up here and help me out, pass these out to their classmates. Come on, two of y'all. These are the seven principles of Kwanzaa, known to Nguzu Saba. Would you pass these out? These are principles that we believe we should live our lives by. The creator of Kwanzaa, the founder, Dr. Milana Queen, said we can practice some of these principles. Some of the time, we can make our lives better here in America. Teach us to Next slide. So now we just want to open the floor for questions. I don't know how I'm going to see it. Hey, hey, Chad. Chad, we got to move expeditiously, but we got like six minutes. Uh, first, give it up for Brother McCarty. Give it up for him. You know what we say? Teach black man. One, two, three. Teach black man. And remember, the opposite of culture is cult. C U L T. So when you don't have a culture, it's a cult. Check. Check. And a cult is when two brothers will shoot each other in the head. Check. Check. Culture is important. Check. Check. So remember what I said. I am intelligent African male. The yes. goal is to be I am intelligent African man. Check. Check. So y'all come get the donuts. If y'all want to talk to Bill McCarty, I'm definitely going to bring you back and bring Brother Steve back to do history. We appreciate this. And do it, Dave Boy Prep always rep. Check. Check. All right. Look, you only get one donut at a piece. And then start pouring at you. Get your feet out there, Jerry. Here. Oh, now come on, girl. Got our time. Don't, don't, don't. You know, you know, you won't. don't get sloppy and then waste your juice. Then we got a big problem. And if, and if you get, if you have your juice, move out the way. And I, I get kind of confused because people say the atheists or the Methodists or I don't understand what God is supposed to kill in her. I think that's a very good question. I think uh, religion is a man. Hey, get your stuff in the We don't need all that talking. Get your choose and move back. Life, especially morally. But for me, uh, I believe that the major crisis in the aftermath of life is not a crisis of, of religion. I believe the major crisis in our life is a cultural crisis. You know, and that we have to return to the best of our culture if we want to actually achieve and have success here in America anyway. If we look at other ethnic that come to America, they're successful because they have their culture in place. That means a set way of doing things, if it would be historically, politically, economically, socially. So they have a culture set. And because of that, they have to be successful. I believe that because of the culture of lack of culture that was, you know, taken away from the Holocaust of enslavement, we 
or in disarray. So oftentimes people will argue that religion is, is a solution. And yes, religion is important, but it's bigger than that. We saw before there are seven areas of culture. Religion is just one. Uh, if you are familiar with a boxer, he trains, he has several different uh, workouts he has to do. He has to spar, he has to hit the speed bag, he has to hit the heavy bag, he has to run. He would not be adequately prepared to win his fight if he only hits the speed bag. You see, so what happens is we're developing ourselves in one area of the but not in all areas. And because that, we're left uh, susceptible to being exploited and oppressed. Thank you. But Bakari, can you tell us what those seven areas of culture are? Yes, the, the seven core areas of culture are history, religion, or what we call spirituality or ethics, political organization, economic organization, social organization, creative production, and ethos. And ethos is simply a collective identity.